Hallelujah, friends. Thomas Manton IV. Happy Father's Day to everyone in the world. I want to speak about uh, authority and the chain of command from God the Father down to the earthly father, down to his laws and principles that work uh, for us. And our connection with those are very important because God has a system just like he has a savior. He's the son, you know, the Bible calls him the son. So Jesus even related to the powerful father. And uh, imagine that, and he had all power in him. He could have said, well, I'm a part of the Godhead. I don't need to talk about the father. You know, I don't need to relate to him. I don't need to display him. But many times in the scripture, Jesus even said to his disciples, When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So I have a connection with someone greater. And you're seeing them in me. That's very powerful. They say that a a large um, percentage of mess in the world that is even going on now is because of the absentee fathers in the household. The son or the daughter, they have no... (sighs) covering they have no relationship to something good so they end up in rebellion and end up in all kinds of issues and problems and that's not good that's supposed to be like that jesus said uh i'll show you the father by my works when you see me you've seen the father so why was he relating to the father very important so i want to say this you need to you need to have a father who's your father Who's your daddy? Who's your father? And I'm not just talking about natural. Natural is good. But the natural father that doesn't have the glory of God or the anointing can't give you a touch from heaven. But your chain of authority with, you know, your, your relationship with them is, is important because the scripture does say, honor your mother and father and it'll be well with you all the days of your life. You'll live long on the earth and it'll be well with you. Things will, things will go well with you. You'll have a great life. So I'm reminded of um, Elisha, who related to Elijah. And we see the exploits of Elijah in 1 Kings 17 through 19, and then go over into 1 Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, and then in 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah was taken away. And Elisha said, what? My father, my father. My father, my father. And, and uh, when uh, Elijah told him to stay in one place, don't follow me, don't come with me. Maybe he was just testing him out. Maybe he was a little irritated by him being there all the time. And Elisha said, no. As sure as, as, sure as you live and sure as the Lord lives and as sure as you, you live, my father Elijah, I will not leave your side. I'm staying with you. So, you know, how, how amazing is that? Malachi 4 said the, 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 the hearts of the father should be turned to the children and the children to the father, lest a curse will come. You want to break a curse? You want to be protected from curses? You need to have a, a, a lineage. You know, you need to have a, a, a connection, a hierarchy. I do in my life. I, I'm connected with fathers. I'm connected with apostles. I'm connected with good pastors, but the pastors are my peers. They're my friends. They're not my fathers. But I have a couple of apostles. Well, more than more than two, but two main ones. And they they have a covering grace that comes from them. Now you can have a father that you relate to and you think is your father and. You receive like, you know, you, you're in standing in a, in a position with that. But you may not be in a very close relationship with them. And then you have maybe another one. Or you have someone. I'm trying to get to a point by saying this. You have, you have one that uh, is a functional instructor to you. You need that. You need someone to be able to tell you, hey, uh, do it this way. Don't do it that way. Let me share my expertise and my wisdom Let me give you my advice. A seasoned, learned person who's brilliant, intellectual, switched on, 
and of course you're listening to one right now, can tell you something good that can help you as a father with a father's heart. That someone that just wants to see you blessed, they want to see you succeed. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you blessed. The Father God wants to see you that way, but you need to have a connection. So you don't want to do it by yourself. I'm reminded of a pastor that I make. He says he's a pastor. I think he's in a, like a preacher going around. He doesn't pastor anywhere in a church because he doesn't have a doesn't have any kind of organization. You can just look and see. And he came up and he asked me a political question about a political leader. And I thought the guy is the guy is absolute trash. He's a devil. So I was truthful to say what I thought about the, this politician, and uh, which is the, the God's honest truth, yeah? So who knows what he wanted to hear? So he kind of like was walked away like, well, and I thought, I'm never going to hear this. This guy's never going to follow to try to talk to me. He just talked to me about ministry, not ask me about politics. And he tells me how he's struggling, going everywhere. And I could see the whole scenario. Yeah, you go to places, they abuse you, they give you nothing, you take your time. Look at how you're dressed, you have nothing, you're living in poverty. You need a mentor who's successful and can teach you about finances and how to get them flowing in your life. If you would just listen, your whole life would change. So the key about fathers, a big part of it is listening. You ever hear your dad say, listen to me? You ever hear a good, strong spiritual leader say, listen to me? You ever hear a business coach say, listen to me? I know what I'm talking about. I want to help you. I want to give you the intel, the info. Listen to me. You ever hear that? That's a big thing. You need to listen. <laughs> Woo, I feel the anointing here. Well, I could, well, is this beginning a new, a new whole uh, book and series and what? Lord, have mercy, authority, fathers. Oh, God, yes, fatherhood. Uh, fathers, they trigger me to do this, but I feel the anointing. It's not something I would maybe talk about every day unless the Lord said so, but I love this. So I'm just on here for a couple of minutes, and I'm going to... I imagine I'll pick this up in another, in another session. You need a father. You need someone. You need an instructor. You need a mentor. You need a coach. You need an apostle, you need a pastor, you need a prophet, you need a leader. You need someone to help you uh, understand a lot of things. And when you're with a mentor, you don't want to ask silly questions, although someone said no question is a bad question, but you don't want to waste time. Ask something pertinent that someone brilliant can answer and really take the insight and the wisdom and move into another higher dimension. So start to make a list of questions. This is a challenge to everyone. Everybody's challenged by this. It's a challenge to the, to the mind. Uh, it's work. Make a list of questions, like 100 questions, 50 questions, 20 questions, 12 questions, 10, 5 questions, 3 questions, key questions, 5 key questions, 10. It, you go to 1,000 if you could. I don't think you could write 1,000 questions, but... Maybe a brilliant person would. I don't know who would answer a thousand questions, but it's good to have the questions and you could pick between the ones that are most important and begin to ask because information is what propels you to the next dimension. And a father, a learned person, a brilliant person will have that information and wisdom to flow and to tell you what you should do to proceed to next. It's good to interact with a father. It's good to interact with a mentor. Oh, Lord. It's good to interact with someone that can help you succeed. It's a very important thing. So, my precious friend, get busy clearing your mind of clutter. And let's get into the program of connection that you can begin to receive info, intel, wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge, understanding, illumination, revelation, enlightenment for the things you need to be doing in your life and in your world. Very, very, very important. Muy importante. In Spanish is how you would say that. Very, very, very vital thing. Don't try to figure everything out yourself. 
You know, when you're by yourself, you don't learn anything because you already know. Listen to this is deep now. When you're by yourself alone, you don't learn anything because you're already rehashing, remember, thinking about, remembering, trying to figure out, trying to envision what you already can see in yourself. So you're not taking in any other outs information from the outside. So you're not receiving any input, but you need to be receiving input every day. Getting on with the program. And this is the purpose of fatherhood. Imagine in the day when everyone's saying, happy Father's Day, trying to buy gifts, trying to act happy that they have a father, trying to celebrate, trying to honor. Some it's kind of awkward and an awkward kind of day. Some of it's really an easy day. Some of it's like a lazy day. Some of it's like a family day. Some, some people it's like, uh, well... I have to say thanks for our dad. Well, listen, what is the purpose of the dad? He has a lot of information that you need. And if you can't ask him, don't be afraid to ask him. Get rid of your fear and sit down and talk to your father and ask him some questions. A lot of people don't ever do that. But if that's too hard or the person you're with you don't think would have the intel on what you want to know, find another father. Find a spiritual father. Find a mentor. Find a coach. Find someone that can help you learn about what you want to know and connect with them. Warren Buffett, who's one of the wealthiest men in, in the world, mega billionaire, up, upwards of a hundred billion dollars. Uh, and he's up and down, you know. He, he, he ran after a mentor when he was young. A lot of stories like that. Even Lester Summerall, the great apostle, he went to find Howard Carter, who became like a father to him. And then he was with Smith Wigglesworth, who was like a father to him. And after they went on, this was back in the early uh, 1900s, and then he grew to have a great ministry over the next many decades. Shook, shook the known world. But he had a father. Elisha had a father, Elijah. Hello. Timothy had a father, Paul, the apostle. So it's important. And some people think, you know, it, be, it becomes like a legalistic thing, like a thing that's mandatory, like a, how could I say? Um, you know, people have a quirky kind of feeling about it because it's, it's like, uh, I don't know. How could I say it? Like a demanded thing, like a domestic thing, like a just part of the program that has to be, well, that you, you're missing the whole purpose and benefit of it then. Excuse me. So it's not like, it's not like, a, it's like a, a formal format and protocol of living. No, that it's for a purpose of, and a benefit. My father was a brilliant man, and he's gone on to be with the Lord many years now. I led him to the Lord because I got saved, and then my, I brought the gospel to my whole family. His parents, him, my mom, all in heaven because of Jesus coming to get a hold of me. We, we were not a Christian family, but my father had a lot more wisdom and insight than I asked him about because of many reasons, maybe. And then we, that's gone now. All his wisdom went with him. He's not here. Whew, glory. <laughs> my dad. Bless my dad, Lord. Bless my grandfather, Lord. They're in heaven. Well, they're blessed anyway. Whether I, you know, when, you, when someone gets to heaven, you don't have to pray. Whether you pray or not, you're praying blessings for people on the earth. This is also a, a very important uh, aspect of fatherhood. It's for earth life, not heaven life. If someone got to hell... You can't rescue them out of there. Your prayers won't rescue them. They're already there. They've gone through the gate. I was listening to Kenneth Hagin had a vision. I had similar vision when I first got saved of hell. God took me there in this spirit. You say you went there? You saw it? Yes, I did. I was there. I was in hell. I've been to heaven several times. I've had these visitations. I'll talk about them in another you know, setting with... I don't talk about those much, but I think I need to talk about them more because people need to have those kind of experiences. It'll change your life and give you a vision from 
you know, the other world that'll give you a vision to do something in this uh, dimension of Earth for the rest of your life. Very powerful, beyond powerful. So he said uh, he was taken to hell when he died and he got into the darkness and he went all the way down there, but he saw a gate with flames behind it and there was a gate and there was a creature that came was going to take him through the gate, but he had a feeling, a sense and a knowing. He was a young man. He was only 15 years old when he died and the Lord was dealing with him. He was going to get saved. Finally, he did get saved. In the midst of that whole crisis, he cried out to God, and that's how he got born again when he's 15 years old. Imagine he became a great apostle. Shook the known world with the word of God. And um, he said, I knew once I got through the gate, I couldn't get back out. So if someone's beyond the gate, they've already gone into hell. You, praying doesn't matter. If someone's in heaven, you think, you think like our prayers are like limited compared. They're already in the glory in the connection of the in the place of the third heaven they're already there they are already there so they don't need you to pray for them prayers are for earth fatherhood is for earth the prophets the prophet is for earth the pastor is for earth the teacher is for earth for for success in life and we need to really get on with it my friend oh lord i feel this we need to get on with it make the connection so many people miss because they don't connect. For whatever reason, all these devils deceiving their minds, lying to them. And uh, people connect also with the wrong people that have no way to help them. And yet there's somebody brilliant close by that they don't even see it. That they could get so much help, so much anointing, so much touch, so much favor, so much blessing. By connecting with someone who God has really touched. And I am thrilled and honored to be coming to you with the anointing of God, the word of the Lord, and this message of you need fatherhood in your life. You need authority. You need that connection. It'll help you benefit. I'm glad to bring it from that side. A lot of people think of fatherhood as a, you know, you know what I mean? Like a, a structure of, 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 of living. But no, there's a benefit to it. There's a blessing in it to have a father. How did Elisha get to do 32 notable miracles when Elisha, Elijah had 16 major miracles uh, written in the scripture about exploits he did in the spirit? Because Elisha saw Elijah work in the, in the glory and he was able to, to ask God for a double portion of his spirit. And he told Elijah, that's what I want. And how would he ever have gotten it if he had never been with Elijah? Never would have happened. It never would have happened. So some dimensions you want to get to in life, you need to connect up and you need to be connected with the right Father in Jesus' name. Thomas Manton IV here. Thank you for sowing into the ministry. Many people are sending love gifts for Father's Day. They consider me their spiritual father. I'm very honored. I want to send you a gift copy of my book, The Laws of Success or the Benefits of Excellence. When you're sowing any seed, please make it a generous one. Say happy Father's Day to Papa Prophet here. And I'll be thrilled and I'll be praying for you. Love you much in Jesus' name. And we'll talk to you again on the next broadcast. Make it a great day in Jesus' name.